Hey everybody, good morning. Uh, we've been going through the attributes of, of God, and we've kind of got to this place where we're looking at, uh, uh, there's different types of attributes of God, and we've kind of come to the place where we've got to the relatable attributes of God in our study. And, and so uh, theologians call the non-communicable attributes of God, uh, these are the, the non-relatable attributes of God, sometimes called the non-moral attributes of God. And these types of attributes are things like God's omniscience, that God knows all things. God's, God's omnipotence, that, that God has all power. Um, God's immortali immortality, that God cannot be killed. That uh, God's immutability, that God cannot be changed. The infiniteness of God. There's, there's so many of these that we've discussed and these are called non-communicable, or they're non-relatable. They're, they're things that we, as human beings, cannot share. Our human response is to, to worship in fear and trembling, and to worship through trust, and through adoration, and through love. But there are other kinds of attributes that are called communicable, or relatable attributes. And these are ones that the human response is to call out to God, to, 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 to receive from Him, the ability to imitate, and the ability to reflect God's glory back. In these attributes, we both worship God, that he's this way, but we also are being invited to imitate and to walk into them with him. And, and so in Ephesians 5, um, verse 2, it says, Therefore be imitators of God. And now when we think about being an imitator of God, what does that mean? What does it entail? What are the, the areas that are off bounds and which are the ones that, are, uh, that we're supposed to? Which are the ones that he's calling us to do? And just like everything else, when we want to learn about God, we have to look at Jesus Christ himself. Now, the really interesting thing is Jesus is our example. He's our model to follow, and yet he's our Lord. Now, this is called a, a paradox that, that there are certain things about Jesus that God is calling us to follow in and to follow after and to model and to, to walk in. When Jesus says, come, follow me, these are the attributes that Jesus is talking about. Things, things like holiness and righteousness um, and truthfulness and goodness and, and mercy and, and a sense of... Uh, a sense... Uh, of, of the glory of a creature in following its master. Jesus um, acts this way. And in the Gospel of John, we see Jesus laying down his life and his willpower. And Philippians 2 talks about him emptying himself of his dignity, emptying himself of his um, desire to be led by himself and instead to be led by his Father. Th th these are the, this is the category. These are the communicable or the relatable attributes that Jesus is asking us to come and follow him into. But there are other attributes of Jesus which are non-communicable, they're non-relatable, and even in the Gospels themselves, we see Jesus is not inviting us into. This is really interesting because in Matthew 10, Jesus sends the disciples out to follow and to imitate him, and he even tells them to, to cast out demons. He tells them to um, to to raise the sick, raise the heal the sick, and raise the dead. And and these are amazing things that 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 in the past maybe only God's prophets have done, but they they look really otherworldly. And we acknowledge that, we believe that, but there's certain attributes and certain things that Jesus accomplishes in the in the Gospels, that we would never be tempted, we should never be tempted to try to enter into. This is a different zone. And we see that the humanity of Jesus, him modeling a perfect creature, but we also see God among us, Emmanuel. And so the obvious ones would be, we are not called to climb on a cross and die for other people's sins. We ourselves are not called to forgive other people. When we forgive, we are declaring that God has forgiven them. And so Jesus says, whatever has been bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever has been bound on earth, loosed on earth, will be loosed in heaven. And Jesus is saying, we are supposed to be declaring the truth of what God will do when he forgives. But we ourselves cannot forgive. Only God alone can forgive. 
And so there's certain things we know we shouldn't kind of get in the zone, but, but there's this foggy gray area in the middle. And I want to talk about that for a couple minutes. There are certain uh, miracles that Jesus does that are talking about his, that are revealing his glory, his, this non-communicable, this non-relatable area of Jesus. There's, there's many things that Jesus has called us to be and to imitate, but there are certain areas where Jesus hasn't told us or invited us to come into. And, and these are the ones that are showing us the glory of God. They're not showing us the imitation and the direction and the potential of the creature. And this is where we need to understand the difference. The folly of the, the hyper-charismatic understanding. I'm not talking about good charismatics. I'm talking about word of faith charismatics. I'm talking about Kenneth Copeland. I'm talking about the New Apostolic Reformation. I'm talking about uh, Bill Johnson and Bethel. I'm talking about the International House of Prayer by Bickle or Catch the Fire like um, Toronto Blessing. There is a blurring of the line between the creator and the creature. They're reading the New Testament, they're reading the Gospels, not understanding that Jesus is both God and God and man. They're not reading the Bible and noticing that there are certain things that Jesus does as a sign or a miracle to point to the fact that he is the Son of God. And so at the end of John, in John chapter 20, this is what it says. This is what it says. It says in John chapter 20. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. There are certain signs that Jesus did to show that he has the same essence as his father. If you have seen me, you have seen my father. Those will never be replicated again. And so we see something very interesting. When Jesus is walking on the water, he does invite Peter to walk on the water with him because he is there. But do you notice what happens? He says, do not be afraid. That's something that's typically said by an angel or by God himself. But when the angel is speaking, it's because the angel is bringing God's word. And then he says, I am. And when he gets in the boat, the storm stops and everybody worships him. Now in the book of Acts, when Paul gets into a serious storm and the boat is going to break up, he goes and he prays to God. He doesn't get up and command the storm. He prays to God, and God says all the souls of these people, all these lives will be preserved as long as the Romans don't kill anybody when we get to shore. Do you see the difference? This is non-communicable. This is non-relatable. Jesus isn't asking us to quell and stop storms. He's not asking us to walk on the water. Jesus feeds 5,000 people, 4,000 people, and he specifically ties that into a truth about who he is. I am the bread of heaven. You must eat my flesh and drink my blood. This is not something that the early church or anybody in church is being asked to replicate because it's not just the miracle. It's pointing to God's omnipotence, his provision, Jesus' ability to provide. Jesus' infiniteness, that all the resources are available to him, and I can take three fish, five fish, two fish, four loaves, it doesn't matter, and I can feed 100,000 people, 10,000, it doesn't matter. I'm God. And, and so we need to be very careful when we read the Gospels to, to, to and th 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 there's an art here, there's a, there's a, uh, when we reread it, we are being called. We are being called to imitate Christ. And I, have, I don't believe that the signs and the wonders have disappeared, but God's calling us, if we do them, 
an imitation of Christ, but there's certain things about Jesus that Jesus isn't asking us to. And when we blur the line between creature and creator, when we say, because I'm a child of God, I'm an adopted child of God, I'm the same as the begotten Son of God, we're misunderstanding how the Bible is describing the non-communicable, non-relatable attributes of God seen in the face of Jesus and the imitatable, moral, relatable, communicable attributes of Jesus that Jesus is commanding his disciples to enter into.